Welcome everyone on this new seven and a quarter inch gauge video. This uh, is going to be a fully narrated video because I want to give uh, uh, my ideas or my impressions of how this open day went at the Hungarian Railway Museum. And for those who don't know this Railway Museum, I also want to give uh, you know, a bit of overview what you can see here besides the trains. And there will be an another version of this video which is you know, just going to be the actual footage which I would re release uh, a couple of days later. So, um, Hungarian Railway Museum is the only place, uh, you know, not privately owned, but owned by an organization where there is a seven and a quarter inch railway where externals can go in on the, on the open days and actually not even on open days, but some other occasions as well. And uh, so besides this uh, seven and a quarter inch gauge layout, they, of course, it works as a museum and based on the footages that you can see now, this was a uh, um, a day for garden railways so it will they featured a couple of you know uh, g scale one scale layout as well so now you can see a modular one scale layout which which more mostly featured uh, live steam engines uh, from austria and germany i mean it, actually the modelers were also from austria and germany and and of course hungary so that was more like a you know mostly narrow gauge austrian and german um, stock so that's it. They usually feature in this uh, sort of exhibition or, or event, which is happens every day, every year. Um, they usually have it in August, and I think this year they decided to move it uh, to June, which was uh, uh, maybe surprised a few people, and uh, probably also the fact that it was 35 degrees, a really hot day, which was announced a long time ago. I guess many people have decided to go elsewhere, you know, close to the lakes or water because we haven't seen a huge influx of uh, yeah, visitors that we usually use, uh, we usually see in these open days. As you can see on the footage, uh, there they have one big Randa house, which acts as a um, exhibition space, where you can see the layouts as well, and also storage. And they, there, there are a couple of open tracks where you can see these hand push vehicles and uh, uh, on this day, there was a steam engine that you can buy tickets to, so you can ride on the real steam engine, like, you know, few miles up and down. There is another um, roundabout with all these stationary engines, uh, mostly, uh, uh, you know, the old steam engines from basically the, the uh, first of the railways in the, in the early uh, late 19th century all the way to the last. And, of course, there are a lot of diesels and, and electrics. And that's the... Uh, uh, the open layout, oh sorry, the seven and a quarter gauge, eight inch gauge layout. And the, the few shots here you can see is uh, um, before the guests arrive. So it's mostly preparation and all we arriving and, you know, getting our locos ready. Uh, by the way, most of the, um, the museum is open air museum. So the, uh, all the models are, uh, or, well, actually the, the uh, prototypical uh, stock is in the open air, so they are in, you know, sort of various conditions you can see in the rest of the videos. Okay, let me talk about seven and a quarter inch. So you can see most of the stock here, you know, some of the engines are still being charged. I have to admit, I don't remember all of the, um, all of the guys here. So I know, for, for example, this uh, small uh, blue engine with these uh, uh, open gondolas, that was a Slovakian modeler. I think the trams came from a Croatian model or one of the light steam engine was coming from Germany. This is a Nohab, which is built by the park and it's a diesel electric, an actual diesel electric. So Nohab is a Swedish uh, um, engine that was built in the 60s based on a GM license. So, you know, Hungary had 10 of them and then Sweden, Denmark and, and some of the Nordic countries have also have them so they are kept in you know the highest esteem and so many of them are renovated now and they are still operating in uh, excursion courses and, and uh, uh, private operators this particular U, uh, Uni union specific switcher is uh, from a hungarian modeler uh, you can see one of the two trams so we had a blue tram and the yellow one i have to admit i was so busy during the day i did not manage to get in touch with most of the people, and I, I actually forget where some of the uh, uh, you know some of the engines are, so I might not be accurate in all these details. 
Um, for some reason, they were running this uh, Nohob without a case in the beginning, uh, and I, uh, then later on I was told that it has just gone through some refurbishing overnight, so they were testing out just to make sure it works. And it has an interesting drive mechanism. I, I don't know too much about these type of these electrics, but I, I, I assume that you know mostly it's the generator is directly hooked to the traction motors, but here the generator actually charges the battery and there is a separate PWM controller. Now you can see some of the Croatian uh, modelers or guests here. Uh, there was this American engine and I believe this is probably a Croatian steam. Going a little bit back, um, in the main uh, roundhouse and exhibition hall there were a couple of uh, engines on display or for example this component car that you have just seen that was this host drawn uh, old tram double decker tram so we are on the top of the second deck and so you can ride on that one uh, you can also see the uh, class 411 um, uh, local that you can also ride on and this is an american local that was purchased after the second world war basically that was left uh, behind by the u.s army and that's the back view to the roundhouse. Again, you can see some of the engines on display. Some of them are in the roundhouse and most of the others are in just uh, open exhibits. And in those tracks, there are some special uh, days where you can see you know, more steam engine, gas steam engine runs. Sometimes if the, um, what is it? The, oh Jesus, I forgot the name of this famous steam train which comes through Hungary then they usually come here so people can go and look at the uh, the, the original cars uh, <clears throat> so going back to seven and a quarter I believe now the park is open so we are actually uh, taking visitors so oh yeah <laughs> let me talk about this one this was an engine that had Bluetooth control so the guy was uh, controlling it from the phone I don't really like the phone idea, but I really like the idea that he was sitting in the back and then so he could see the whole train going. This is something that I actually want to do at some point. So do some, add some radio controls to my engine because I think that would be cool, especially in, uh, in tracks like this. As I said, maybe it was a temperature, I'm not really sure, uh, but we didn't have so many guests. So usually there is a, like a huge queue on some of these days and and now they, uh, um, in this day it was really leisurely. Sometimes we were running with just a few people. Now we are going to see a footage of me driving around the track and I had um, an action camera fixed to the, to the engine. So it's not the best quality, it's a little bit shaky, but I think the wide view here really gives a, a good idea how the whole park, look, park looks like and how the, the, the track looks like. So one loop is 835 meters, and that was important for me because at least I knew how much I run and I did 25 laps, so that's almost like uh, a little bit more than 20 kilometers, which I think it was a nice, uh, you know, a nice load for the engine and you know, everything was fine. It is so much easier, this layout is so much easier compared to mine where I have very tight curves and high grades and this is just flat and co uh, relatively you know, big radii. So here we had to stop because uh, the other uh, trains that are returning back to the engine, uh, sorry, back to the station, uh, they go through a T, a diamond here. So we have a signal which is now showing, uh, sorry, yellow. Uh, and then we proceed. And so there is the uh, two diamonds and we go under a footpath or a footbridge. And on the right, you can see the signal house where they control all the signals and they actually use the same uh, signaling that is used in the Hungarian railways, so all the relays from like, you know, 60s and 70s. This is a really long straight. I, was, uh, I, I pushed a little bit too much, I guess, in here, but uh, at least I wanted to see what's the maximum speed that I can get. And I still haven't reached the maximum speed because it was just going too fast for me. So that was like, you know, half a throttle. So, and, and I know uh, the, my engine doesn't have a lot of power, but it runs fast because that's the, you know, the biggest and the smallest chains that I can fit in this chassis. So there is almost like a 160, 180 uh, curve. So we are going back and uh, this is like a, you know, more shady part. Uh, 
they want they also created a couple of um, uh, uh, tunnels from vegetation you may notice that the some of the signals are not working so um, they have run into some sort of problems and at some point they decided that only the station signals are going to work and then the block signals throughout the the layouts are just going to be blank so we just have to watch each other which was fine i mean you can probably count but there wasn't more than probably six or seven trains at the same time now we are diverging to the at uh, the to the right at the straight track, straight piece of track that was the old layout or the original layout and this was an extension that was a couple of years later and now we are going past the second roundabout with the steam engines on the right and uh, uh, we can see some pipings I don't know what it is maybe it's the the heating of the old uh, steam engine or sorry the uh, the roundhouse and again we see some uh, points here because I think even when this extension was built it was built like a, like a one line out and then the loop and then it, uh, the trains were returning on the same track but then later on they added a second track and this that, that's why we have all these uh, points here some of them are unused it's a quite a nice extension especially because they added a pond here and uh, there is a bridge over the pond and as we call, you can see the, uh, the back of the roundhouse on the right. And um, all this uh, site was obviously an old steam shed and engine shed, which they probably abandoned in the, si 60, uh, in the seven, I, I don't know, 60s or 70s. So it's been laying uh, unused for probably decades. And then uh, they decided to make it into an area museum. So that's the only tunnel. The, the track diverging to the right goes to their maintenance shed i guess so this, this building is probably uh, used for maintenance and there's a maintenance track on the back and now we are returning uh, on a parallel track uh, same way we came in we are cross crossing some of the internal roads there are um, well i think these are the actual uh, crossing signals that are used in hungary and then throughout the track you can see the you know smaller ones that are obviously just models so two flashing lights on the top and if no train is coming then there is one uh, white so two red flashing when the train is coming and one white flashing if uh, if there is no train and that was the point where we had to queue up to get back to the main station so i had to stop here so i'm just going to cut the video and now we can advance one more station and most of the signals you see is used in the hungarian railway so it's either four or three aspect color signals. Three aspect is usually the um, uh, the block signals, and four aspect would be the ones in the entrance or the exit of the stations. And uh, just like with many other railways, they give an indication to how to pass the signal and what is expected on the next signal. So we have seen yellow in some cases, which means that you can proceed, but it's going to be red in the next signal. And I believe um, we are getting red here. Uh, just in a couple of minutes so once this train passes then it will be set back to red red um, we are just using uh, well they are just using magnets which are fixed onto the to the track uh, to the locos and there are some uh, reed switches in the in the track after the signals so this is how they know where trains are which works pretty well so we are getting a red signal and then we will receive once it turns then we will get two yellows which means you can proceed and the next signal is going to be red but then the station you are going into the station with a di in a diverging track so you have to slow down anyway that's how the signal works again you see some tracks here which are not really uh, used most of the time i mean not by us so the parallel track on the right allows you to get into platform four and five on the station and this one will get you into one two and three that's what we usually use and um, for the time being we just use these four sorry first three tracks and we just you know queued after each other so this can fit probably three consists or well, obviously these smaller ones and then they use the uh, first two tracks for the really long trains so we just got back to the same station. Uh, this station canopy was really a good treat in this uh, really, really hot weather. And that was 835 meters. So 
rest of the video is just like you know more footage of trains going past i will not i don't, as i said i'm <laughs> i don't remember all the details so the the the, uh, the previous two smaller engines i think that's owned by the uh, the museum so this was a guest one guest engine i really like this entire consist of the old u.s cars uh, funny that you can only sit on the first car, so the, the rest was just sort of decoration. And I really like this boxcar at the end. It's probably because the whole boxcar thing, but it, when it was going through junctions, it was it was making a really you know nice bassy sound. That's probably again because of the uh, of the box. So this um, train with the two smaller steam engines, I think that's uh, that's owned by the museum, as I said. And they also have two small um, uh, switcher engines, which I don't think I have a video of. And I believe they started with those two engines. They were uh, commercially manufactured by somebody. And then they, well, they built some new engines and the know-how. Um, there was a nice switcher. I quite like the details. And the funny fact about it, is that the driving trolley only has one track and the other one is, is actually fixed or hanging on the engine. Uh, you see the Croatian steam again. I don't know how they managed, it was so hot. And I was riding again. Um, you see most of the uh, line side signs, again prototypical in a Hungarian railway, so the TH here is the shunting limit sign. Here there was a, uh, a signal which was showing yellow and red, sorry, yellow and, and green. There was uh, basically a signal for this one that we are just passing now because uh, you can't see it from the bushes. So that's how it works in the real life as well. So there's uh, called the repeating signals. I'm not sure if there is a term for that in, um, in English or how it's called in English. <laughs> so we are, um, we are just going through the, same, the, the layout again. Funny, this is the second time I've been to Open Day, and on the previous uh, occasion, I I was so excited because it was something new for me, and I wasn't sure if my engine is going to run. I wasn't sure if it's you know if the, if the batteries are going to last for the whole day. Uh, so I was really, really nervous. I didn't have a lot of footage. I just took a couple of pictures, mostly with my phone. So this was the first time that I actually. I've taken the time to, you know, to take some footage and then, you know, properly document this event. And that was the only <laughs> occasion when I actually uh, rode on, a, on another train. Uh, so, yeah, probably next time I should spend a little bit more time to, you know, ride on some of the other trains, some of the other guests. And we are reaching the end of the footage. I hope you like this format and at least you managed to learn something about this layout and also the Hungarian Railway Museum. As I said, there will be an unnarrated version uh, which I will be uploading in the next few days. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next video.